black thing go from left to right, and I thought, I'm going to die out here. No one's ever going to know. I couldn't believe what my eyeballs were showing me. I'll never forget how evil the eyes were. It was horrible. I mean, I've never seen nothing that evil. It ran towards me at a, at a rate that I, I I can't even explain. Turned and stared at me, and this look of I just want to kill you. I want to say it was human, but it wasn't. He was he was he was yelling at me to grab a gun, grab a gun. I was like, for what? He said, just grab a gun. And there's footprints all the way to the door of my house. It had went inside my garage, all the way to the door. 911, what are you reporting? Jesus Christ, you better... Sir? Zio! Hello? Get somebody out here. What's going on now, sir? That son of a bitch is about six foot nine, I don't know. Do you see him now, sir? Yes, I'm looking right at him. Uh Uh-oh. You're listening to Sasquatch Chronicles. Check us out online at sasquatchchronicles.com. If you've had an encounter, email me. My email address is wes at sasquatchchronicles.com. Welcome to the show, everyone. Thanks for being here tonight. Got a great show planned for you tonight. Going to be talking about Dogman. Uh, it's been a while since I've done a couple Dogman episodes, but I got a great, great episode for you tonight. Going to be speaking to uh, Andrew, who ran into one of these things back in the late 70s up in Maryland. He was out with his girlfriend, who later became his wife, and one of these creatures bumped the back of his, his car. He got out and was face-to-face with what he describes as a dog man. And what's fascinating about it is a lot of people have the same descriptions that Andrew talks about, very close to what he talks about. It really makes you wonder what this thing is. I'll also be talking to Robert, who is uh, ex-Delta Force, uh, Special Forces, and very impressive military career, uh, very impressed with the guy. I really enjoyed talking with both him and Andrew. And he had actually recently seen a creature uh, that paced their car going over 70 miles an hour. And so it should be a great show tonight. I really appreciate you guys being here. Hope your 2018 is treating you well. Uh, Gosh, 2018, I never thought I'd live this long. (laughs) But I appreciate you guys being here. Uh, If you've had an encounter and you'd like to be on the show, shoot me an email. My email address is wes at sasquatchchronicles.com. If you get a chance, check out the website, sasquatchchronicles.com. Get your daily blog. You can become a member and get additional shows. I'll be back on Sunday for the members. Uh, But tonight should be a very, very fascinating night. Thank you again for being here. Uh, Let's jump into it. Andrew, welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. Well, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. No, I appreciate you being here. Thank you again. Um, And I know you had a a pretty terrifying encounter, actually, Uh, one that I know we've talked over the last couple of months about this encounter, and I really do appreciate you being here. Uh, If you would, for the audience, would you kind of just start from the beginning and and just walk us into the encounter? Um, What were you guys out doing? And then uh, just take your time, Andrew, and just tell us what what you ran into. Um, Sure. Well, thank you. Um, Well, my wife and I, well, actually, she wasn't my wife at the time. She was my girlfriend. Um, We were in high school at the time. We were in 12th grade. And um, it was a weekend night in... November of 1978, um, we were parking like high school students do, and there was a local park near where we lived that had just been built a few years before, so it was still quite new, and it had become, um, uh, you know, a, a, a favorite spot for everybody to go, especially the high school couples, and we. Um, I'm sorry, man. Um, no, you're fine. Take your time. I'm sorry. It's all right. This is a terrifying um, encounter. I mean, just you telling it scared it me, is. so I it, can it, imagine li- living through it. It's hard. Um, well, we we pulled in, in into our, our favorite spot, which was usually the last spot in the parking lot, which was the furthest from the main road that we pull off of to go into the park. Um, we 
pulled the car in and it was a cold night and so it, it just so happened that we were the only ones in the parking lot that night so I'd, I'd left the car running it was cold so I had the heat on and uh, we had music on and um, we were laughing and talking and playing and just things that you do at that age you know and we really enjoyed each other's company all of a sudden we heard um, like a commotion behind the car and I looked around and she looked around and it was a small herd of deer like running real fast past the back of the car and we had, I had never seen that and I was like that's really strange because um, we'd always see them in the field grazing you know and we'd pull in and they would kind of look up at us and go back to grazing again but they were they were fleeing it looked like and I don't know maybe 15 or 20 seconds later um, there was like a small thud on the back of the car and and we both kind of looked at each other and I said, one, one of the deer must have just run by and kind of, you know, grazed the back of the car. And just as I was saying that, there was like a real loud thud on the back of the car and the car actually moved up and down. And um, the weekend before, we had gone to a high school party and I had pulled up to the curve and a bunch of my friends from the football team had run up behind the car as we, you know, as I parked and was pushing up and down the back of the car. And I thought it was them again. And that night I actually, um, I had jumped out of the car and kind of chased them across the yard of where the party was, you know, and we were just laughing. It was, it, we were, it was all being done in fun, you know? Yeah. And so that's what I thought had happened. That was, that was my first thought. My, my friends had, had, had seen the car from the road and, um, snuck up behind us and was pushing down the car again. So just like I did the week before, I jumped out of the car and I had grabbed a flashlight that my father had given me. It was like a big, long police flashlight. And I was going to chase them into the woods because the woods was like directly behind where the car was. And as soon as I stepped out of the car, I looked up and there was this thing a few feet behind the hood I mean, the, the back, I'm sorry, the trunk is, is what I meant. And I, um, I just stopped. And this thing was just enormous. And I would say nine or ten feet tall. I'm 6'3", and that thing made me look very, very small. And I felt small, small at the time, but it, it, it was a black, it looked like a black wolf. And its mouth was open. Um, it was growling. Um, can I, can I stop here a second? Yeah, of course. Sorry. This is really, really hard for me to talk about. No, that's all right. That's all right. Um, it's, uh, I, I know what you mean when, when you're, t when you, when you retell your encounter, people don't understand. You go back to that moment. You relive that moment and you're right there back in that moment. It's like a time machine. You're back there in that moment and it's, it's hard sometimes, you know? It's ter it, it was terrifying, man. It really was. I can imagine. Uh, what, was it on two legs when it was looking on you? Was it up? up it, it was stand yeah, it was standing up. I couldn't really see the legs real well because I was still on the side of the car, and it was close enough to the car where I couldn't really see a lot of the body. I could see, you know, the obviously the upper part of the body, and its arms were out, and the head was probably to me. It felt like it was two feet wide, um, like a wolf has or a husky. It had like the, the big bunch of hair on the side of the head that kind of shoots out. Yeah. Um, it had enormous ears and it, it just, it was, it looked completely unreal. It had saliva coming from the mouth and it, it the eyes were glowing red. Now, I, I don't know if, if it was shine from the interior of the car the, the interior light of the car when I opened the door, I don't know. Um, I always kind of felt that they were glowing. <laughs> yeah. um, my wife, she had looked out the back window and saw the eyes and started to scream at that point. And she was just screaming and screaming. And this, this thing, um, it looked like I, it moved towards me. 
it happened so quickly, but it, he, it moved towards me, but it looked like it kind of slid over the grass. It wasn't like it was not like you saw the body take a step, you know, like you would a person. Like the whole body would kind of move, hunch forward when, when you take the step. It kind of just slid across the grass, and um, which just completely terrified me. And um, at that same moment, it kind of, gla- I, I think it, it kind of glanced down at the flashlight I was holding. It was a big silver flashlight. It looked down, it looked back at me real quick. And at that exact moment, I saw another set of red eyes behind it, and it kind of, kind of looked around it towards me. And at that moment, I think that's, that's the, the exact moment that I moved back into the car. I mean, I, I'd moved like I'd never moved in my life. Oh, I can imagine. Um, to this very, at this, to this very day, I don't know how I got in that seat. I don't know how I moved that fast. It's almost like it's blank or, or, or something very strange happened. I just, all of a sudden I found myself back in the seat, slamming the door and taking that car across the parking lot. And, um, you know, at, at that point, my, my girlfriend, my wife was still screaming <laughs> and she screamed for a couple miles. I mean, it, it was that horrible. And, um, I'm screaming, what the hell was that? What the hell was that over and over again? Because I was just petrified. And, um, as we were leaving, there was a, a loud thud on the back of the car. I don't know if it, if it was jumping on the car or it threw something at the car or it just swatted the car. I'm not sure. Um, the next morning there was a dent in the, the rear right panel of the car, um, that wasn't there before. Um, yeah. And that's kind of a shame because that was a damn nice car, wasn't it? It was a really (laughs) nice car. (laughs) What was it? It was a Chevy, uh, it was a no, it was a Nova, it was a 69 yeah. Nova. No, yeah, beautiful car. That, that thing could move, and I, I praise God that it, it it could move. You know, I mean, I was flying down that road, and and it was just the most terrifying thing. And um, I don't know, a couple miles down the road, my wife was, you know, hi- hyperventilating and screaming because she was, you know, had been screaming so much. You know, I'm still yelling because I don't know what's going on. I'm looking in the, in the rearview mirror. Um, there were no cars on the road, praise God. And I just kept on going and going and going. And I mean, we were honestly, uh, Wes, we were terrified for months and months and months after that. And I literally, when I drove her home, I drove the car over the grass at the the apartment complex, (laughs) drove it all the way up onto the sidewalks and up to the glass door, got her as close to that door. That's how scared we were and let her out so she was real close to the door and for i don't know maybe six weeks when i came home i put a couch in front of the the door you know just to block anything i mean we were we were so scared and even talking about it now it's it's you know as like i've told you before you know i haven't really talked about it you know we we talked about it a few times over the years but um, just talking about it, I just, my whole body just starts to shake like it is now. Yeah. And I appreciate you talking about it. Cause I know it's, you know, I know you didn't really want to come on the show and share it. And I was no. bugging you and bugging you and bugging you to come on. Cause, uh, it's a fascinating encounter. Do you mind, do you want to back up and for the audience sure. describe what you were seeing? You had a wolf's head, but do you remember anything as far as the body goes, as far as did it show its teeth? Um, the eyes or anything like that. I realize it's dark, but you had that interior light kind of hit it as you got out. Was there anything yeah. that you remember? Um, it was black. It, it was black, black. The head was enormous. The eyes were red. Um, I, I remember two enormous canine teeth, the top ones, and there was saliva or something dripping off of, of those teeth at the time. I think I described it to you before. The only way I can really describe the way it, it was kind of hunched towards me um, is kind of like how a buffalo's head is stuck on its body. You know how it has that big, massive shoulders and yeah. the head is stuck on the shoulders? That was kind of the feeling I had. It was just this enormous head on this enormous shoulders with, and the arms were just, just 
I'd, I'd never seen anything like I mean, of course, I've never seen anything like it. Did it stand and, uh, more like a man when it was standing there? Did it remind you more of, I mean, take the head aside, but the rest of the body, did it remind you more of a man standing there? You know, it it, it was standing up like a man, but it was hunched forward um, almost like in a, like almost maybe like in a, an attack pose. I, I don't know. It was just kind of like like I said I didn't I couldn't see a lot of the legs I couldn't see the feet at all. All I saw was like you know from the torso up, and of course that was you know he was really tall, really really tall. Um, but that's I, I just remember everything was just um, freakishly oversized. You know the arms were freakishly oversized, the teeth were freakishly oversized, the head was just enormous, the ears you could see the ears poked way way up i mean everything was big whatever i saw behind it when the when i saw the other set of red eyes come around the the side of it i'd never saw anything other than the eyes um i don't know if it was because it was farther back or because you know there wasn't a lot of light there but i did see the eyes so there was definitely two of of whatever this was yeah no and i appreciate you going through that it's why do you think it didn't attack you you know, I don't know. Um, I know, uh, you know, the, the times that we did talk about it, we were always like, I wonder if, you know, they were after the deer or whatever it was, was after the deer because the, the deer had gone by first. And then we, you know, we were reasoning with each other like, well, why would it stop, you know, and and hit the back of a car of two people sealed up inside of a, a metal box, you know, when they're chasing deer. So we, we never, it was never clear to us why this thing stopped to harass us. Yeah. And the, the red eyes almost make it worse, don't it? doesn't it? When you see red glowing okay. eyes, like it'd be better just to see black eyes. And for some reason in my mind, red glowing eyes almost ma- yeah. makes it more terrifying. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's true. And, and, it's and and there and like I told you before, there was there was such a feeling of evil, you know. And um, I ended up in the ministry, um, and one of the reasons why I ended up in in ministry was because of this this incident. Um, but the the sense of evil that I felt, it wasn't just we were scared. There was there was a I don't there was there was just a, something in the air that just felt evil you know and i think that terrified us just as much as the appearance you know yeah. because it's almost like you couldn't shake it you know it, it took a long time for us to shake it and and my wife always said you know i think it affected you more than it affected me you know she goes i i saw what i saw but you were right in its face and um honestly um she she said for years after that that I was never the same. You know, I, I didn't laugh as hard. Um, I, I dealt with depression from time to time. And uh, she, she just said I was never the same. Even though I enjoyed ministry, I loved the Lord. You know, I loved ministry. I loved, you know, my family. And we raised four four great kids, you know. And it, it, it just, uh, it, it really did shift our lives in every way possible, I think. I don't know if this is making any sense. No, it is. It is. I mean, you know, you you ran into something that supposedly doesn't exist, you know, makes zero sense. It's not like running into a deer or running into a bear. Um, As you said before, the evil, you know. Uh, Did you get the feeling like this thing was unnatural? I did. I did. And we, we always, you know, for years afterwards, we always kind of wrote it off as a supernatural event that, um, that it was something that was in, in opposition to, to God. And we kind of wrote it off that way. And, and it wasn't until I ran across your shows on YouTube and I'm like, there's other people seeing something like what we went through, you know, and maybe it wasn't supernatural or maybe it was both. I still don't know yet, really honestly, but yeah, it's terrifying to run into something yeah. like this. Was there any smell that you remember? I don't. I don't remember anything like that at all. Um, like, like I said before, it happened so quickly. Yeah. And um, you know, and I wasn't out of the car that long. 
but it was, you know, I, I think one thing I didn't mention was its growl. Um, it was growling. And I think I'd written to you that, you know, I'm a musician, so it always made me feel like, you know, it was a bass guitar in a concert. It was, there was a rumble in my chest. And when it was growling, it wasn't real loud. It was very, very low. But, you know, volume-wise, it was very low. But, you know, it rumbled my chest. Yeah, I know what you mean by that. I've, I've experienced something similar with Sasquatch. And you're right. It's not really a loud... And I realize we might be talking about apples and oranges here. But the growl's very... Uh, the way you're describing it's very close to what I heard. It's not... You're right. It's not loud. But it's... Yeah. Physically, you can feel it. Yeah. How did this affect you? I mean, did you guys, did you tell anyone about this? Did you or your, I realize it was your wife at the time, it was your girlfriend, but did you guys ever tell anyone about this as far as what you guys saw? Um, we we shared it with uh, a couple that were friends of ours um, not long after it happened. Um, and it didn't go real well. They thought we were joking. And it, of course, it didn't go well with us because we were, we were as serious as you can get, you know. And this was a very traumatic thing, and we felt like we needed to tell somebody, you know. We were young, and so at, after that that encounter with them, we we decided to be quiet about it and and never talk about it again with anyone else because it it made us feel worse than we already felt, you know. Yeah, no, I hear you. And it, it's not good to bottle it up over the years. I realize sometimes it's hard when you tell someone and they're like, oh, come on, what were you guys out doing? You know, drink, were you guys drinking? Were you guys, you know, I'm sure you get that whenever you recounted the story. But, um, you know, it, it's, it's terrifying to run into this thing. And then when you bottle it up over the years, you know, like you re recounting it, you know, it still affects you. Um, yeah. Did it ever affect you as far as going out in the woods or um, did you ever go camping? It did. Yeah, we. I, I have always hated nighttime. Um, I won't go out at night unless I have to. Um, of course, being in the ministry, there were a lot of evening services and that kind of thing. But I always kind of, you know, got straight to the car. And I, it, it's funny over the years, I, I'd, I'd forgotten why. You know, I just did it. You know, and and it wasn't really until I started talking with you and listening to your shows, I started really analyzing. Oh, that's why I don't like going out at night. I had completely forgotten because it was so many years ago. And, uh, you know. Yeah, no, and I understand. It, and you yeah. went back to the spot. How did that How did that go? I know you recently went back to that location. I did. I did. And um, I drove by, and there, were, there, there was a young family playing on the playground there, and there was a guy in the field with a couple of his dogs. So I decided to get out and just walk it you know, and just be there, you know, and it, it was, everybody was fine. It was a great feeling. It was a typical park, you know, and it went well, you know, and I drove away and I thought, you know, okay, I, I did it. I came back. This is where it happened. And now everything is fine here. And, you know, I felt good about that. You know, I really did, but yeah, it's important. It was strange being there. I can tell you. Yeah. I would imagine strange being there again. Did you and your wife talk about it over the years? We did. We did. Um, not a whole lot. It wasn't many years after that that we started having kids and, you know, and, and between children and ministry and working, um, you know, we, we became very busy doing other things. But once in a great while, it would, you know, it would come up. She, you know, she later in life got, got sick and I, I lost her to cancer. Um, but it, got, it came to a point in her life where she just didn't want to talk about it anymore. And, uh, and so we didn't. Yeah, I'm sorry. But when we did talk about it, we it was a, we, we we were always left with the feeling, you know, the, the feeling that we, we we never got answers what happened that night or what that was, because it never did make sense to us. And I guess not investigating it, there wasn't a lot of information. Of course, there was no information back then about what it may have been, other than something supernatural, maybe. Yeah, and yeah. and I'm sorry to hear about your wife losing your wife to cancer, and and I kind of understand where she's coming from over the years. You know, not really wanting yeah. to. It's not a happy memory. You know what I mean? No. Um, it makes me wonder if you know these things. I think are physical. I don't know that they're not. I you know they might be physical and supernatural. You might have hit it right on the head, but it makes me wonder if a dog or a canine, whatever these things are, is a predator. 
and were predators and the deer were prey, I wonder if they thought you guys were interrupting their hunt so they'd stop mm-hmm. and make you guys move along. It, it's kind of – it makes you wonder why they stopped because if they would have just kept going, you probably would have never even seen them. Yeah, we and we, we never would have. It would, it would have just been a bunch of deer going by, you know. What do you think Dogman is? What's your honest opinion, Andrew? I, I really believe in my heart it, it's evil. Um, why it's evil or um, where it comes from, I don't know. But, I, it, but what I saw was physical. It, there's no question about it. But the, the, the sense of evil that I felt was very real. So, I, I, you know, other than that, I, I don't know what, what else to, t- to tell you about it. I don't know. I really don't know. I wish I could tell you. I really do. No, I mean, you're the best person to ask. I mean, you were that close to the thing. You know, I ask people what Bigfoot is, and everyone kind of has a different answer. But I know with the yeah. dog man, it's just different. It's very odd. You know, I had uh, a lady on the, the show, and, and her nephew had seen one. And he was a police officer. And he was pulling someone over in Texas, and he had they had actually run into one. These guys in the truck started yelling, Lobo, Lobo, you know, wolf. And... They took off while well, the cop stayed there, and he said a werewolf stepped out of the woods, and he ended up shooting at it. And from that point on, um, he thought it was following him because he drove that same road every night, you know, pulling over people for speeding or whatever. And he felt like he had been following him. But it's interesting you say evil because a lot of people who run into this thing, especially the dog man, uh, they will say it's evil. They will say they got a very evil feeling. You know, there was a guy, uh, gosh, I can't remember his name. He was in California, and there was one that stepped out. I think they broke down on on a road, and they were hitch, trying to hitchhike back into town. He had called his brother, and this thing had shown up. And he it was basically a, a werewolf, an up, upright, walking, half-man, half-dog type thing. They were freaking out over it, and it was stalking him the whole time. And he had made the comment he thought it was evil. And I find that fascinating because there's not a lot of natural animals you stop and go, that they're evil. You know, I mean, yeah. even a crocodile or a shark, I don't know that I would say is evil. Um, right. You know, and, or some of the biggest predators on the planet, I don't know that I'd – like a grizzly bear, I don't know I'd say a grizzly is really evil. But for some reason with the dog man, everyone always says it's evil, and it makes me wonder – if it's something, obviously, everyone that has seen it, too, as well, says it's very physical. It's not like a ghost or a, a spirit they run into. They say it's very physical. But it makes yeah. you wonder what this thing is. It really makes you wonder what this thing is. Yeah. But I appreciate you taking the time to come on and, and share it, Andrew. I know it wasn't the easiest thing in the world. Well, thank you. And I want to thank you for, for having these shows because... You know, it honestly, it's done me a lot of good listening. Not so much that other people have had hard things happen to them, but you don't feel so alone, you know. And um, I think my wife and I felt so alone, you know, because we couldn't share it. It was something we couldn't explain. And um, you've definitely given given people a place to go, you know, who feel alone and feel like they're isolated because they can't share it. You know, because it is a freaky thing and it is something that seems in life shouldn't happen, you know, and why we don't know about it still boggles me. You know, I just wanted to thank you and and tell you how much I appreciate it because it's really been a big help to me. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, brother. Thank you for the kind words. Next up on the show, I want to welcome Robert. Robert, thanks for coming on. Hey, Wes. How you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I know you have an impressive military career, but you saw a very strange creature. Um, kind of walk us into that. I mean, you're welcome to talk about your military career, too, as if, if you want to, Robert. If you don't want to, that's okay. Um, well, the, rest, the reason I told you a little bit about what I did in the military, and I'll tell the, the people that are listening, I'm a former 18 Delta. I was a Special Forces medic. And the reason that I brought that up is because I've worked a lot in Central America um, with a lot of different animals. I've been out in the jungles. I've come across a lot of different things. So that's really important. So it's not like, hey, you know, I'm a sniper. Uh, my job on a, on, a, on a Special Forces A team, on an ODA, was 
I was the um, the 18 Delta. I was the SF medic. I mean, I go through all the same training. I'm a Green Beret first, but my my primary job on the team would be as a as a medic. So we have a lot of extensive training. Our training, you know, roughly is two years, and it's kind of condensed physician's assistant training. But we do a lot of veterinarian uh, training because when we go into villages or other places to win the hearts and minds of the people, you know, we 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 work with a lot of animals. So the reason I was telling you that was just so that I could kind of differentiate or explain what I saw and and then explain that I've never seen anything like this before. Yeah, no, and I appreciate sharing it very much. Um, and it is impressive. Thank you for your service. I don't think I've said that to you. And I know it's kind of a cliche thing to say, but thank God guys are like you are out there because – you know, we might be speaking German at this point if it was up to me. <laughs> but well, I, there's a lot of great Americans. And I said, you know, you, you don't just have to serve in the military, but we have a lot of uh, firefighters and EMS and, and police officers and people that are serving in the homelands and, and they're serving all over the world. And it's just one big family of, of people that are, that are giving more and they, they like to do this. And, you know, I, I didn't join the military to have someone pat me on the back or say thank you. And it's sometimes it's really strange when people do that. But the reason that we do what we do is because we believe in that we live in a great country. And, yeah, and, and the, the fact that we have freedom of speech, the fact that we can talk about something like this, you know, I think when I originally sent you that email, as I was sending the email out, I'm saying, what am I doing? Because when, when it's so counter against saying that, hey, I saw something that I can't explain, but you know what? I became fascinated and I started listening to your show because when I saw what I saw, I, I started to go on the internet and I started to say, hey, did anyone else see something like this? That was really important to me. And then I came across your show and I just started listening to it. And I said, hey, wait a minute. Other people have seen this. You know, they've seen it in other parts of the country, you know, all, all over the country. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, if you would walk us into it for the audience listening, tell us what you saw. What, what were you okay. and your girlfriend doing? And and just take yeah. your time and. And my business in. partner, yes. And let me tell you what we were doing. We were, um, we, what we do is we manufacture ballistics. So I travel up and down the coast. I have a company, and and what we do is we we travel and I train I train police officers on utilizing a shield that I I invented. And the reason we do that is um, the shield's designed. To, you know, it's it's just a very special shield. And I I travel and I show police. So I'm always in my car traveling. So what happened was, um, normally I've got to drive up the coast. We do a lot of our manufacturing in Florida. So if I have to drive up north, whether it's to Boston, which I'm here now, we, we would drive up. I would, I would sleep pretty much all day. And then I would get up um, when, it's, when it's getting dark. And I'd start driving because it's easier to drive at nighttime than it is to drive in the daytime. So what would happen would be, so I'd, I would sleep for a while, get up, and would start driving. So that was just the, the usual course of events. So what was happening, we, I slept, we get up, we're, we're driving north, going through Jacksonville, and then going through up north. And we're coming through uh, Georgia into South Carolina. And it was late at night, um, roughly around 3 or 4 in the morning. And that's the best time to travel um, if you slept all day because no one's on the road. So, you know, we're moving at a pretty good, pretty good speed. She was driving. I was, you know, going through everything, and I usually tap on my computer or I'm, I'm on the phone or I'm setting appointments up or sending out emails or something. But we we're widely awake. So she was driving um, her Chevy Tahoe, big truck, um, going about 70 miles an hour. So I put my phone down, I'm looking forward, and all of a sudden, out of the left side um, of my eye, well, she's driving, but on the left side, the median part of the highway, we were traveling north. What I saw was this flash or something moving extreme fast down the left side of the highway along the median, like in between the highway and the bushes. Like there's this little path of grass, and it was moving at, at, a, at a high clip rate. And I was like, and I caught my attention. I was like, holy shit, what's that? And I, And before I knew it, it, I looked to my left and I saw what appeared to be like an animal. 
then it it did not which was but this is what blows my mind it did a 90 degree turn so it's coming down along that path on the highway we're traveling 70 miles north it's coming down south then it stops and it runs in front of the car in front of the truck and then it does another 90 degree turn and now it's it, without stopping which i can't explain how this did this without stopping and it started running north in, on my side of the vehicle and what happened was it turned its head and opened its mouth like it was bracing for impact and then what it did was it it kind of sidestepped and the car brushed alongside of it and within inside those five seconds and I, and you asked me like why would i think it was five seconds because I, I went over this replay in my mind, and, and normally, like, when we jump out of an airplane, or anybody who, who is a paratrooper jumps out of an airplane, they'll tell you the way we count is 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000. So with inside that 5, 1,000s, you know, when I, I play this, that's exactly probably five seconds of, of frontal view that I had looking directly at this. It wasn't like it was moving faster than the car. It was moving at the same speed of the car, which was roughly around 70, little, maybe a little bit over 72, 74, like around that type of speed. And then it, it turned its head, it looked, and then it stepped off to the side, and then we brushed right along it. And I was just in complete, my mouth hit the floor. And I said, holy shit, did you see that? And then she said, what was that? And I'm thinking, I just saw Bigfoot. And then I, I'm, she, I'm thinking... It didn't look like a Bigfoot. I had no idea what I looked at. Let me describe what I saw. What I, when I was looking, why it caught my attention was the headlights. It had, it was kind of like reddish brown, like very light in color, not like black or any type of, but it was reddish brown. So the headlights, I picked it up in the headlights as soon as we were traveling and I saw it moving south. It caught the corner of my eye, and then I kind of turned my head, and by that time, it was going in front of the vehicle. But let me tell you what it looked like. It was basically um, all covered in hair except the face. It had the front. The, it, was very, it was very jacked, very strong up in the shoulders, the biceps, the triceps, very strong um, look, very narrow waist. It had hands. But what really fascinated me when I looked at this, when it was moving on all fours, it had the back hinds that looked like a dog. And, it, and, and what, this is what was really strange when it turned to look at me and it was looking at the vehicle, not really looking at it, you know, eye contact, but it was looking at the vehicle, the, the lights. It's the tongue come out of the mouth when it was turned, looking over its left shoulder, its tongue come out of its mouth. And the face kind of looked like a human being. If, if you asked me what it looked like, I would say it looked like a cross between a wolf and a orangutan. And that sounds kind of completely insane, but that's what I what I saw. Now, people listening are well, that's, oh, that's that's crap. Oh yeah, I didn't see that. I'm telling you, I have no reason to. And I this was a big thing that I said. I've had other friends say, hey, why would you even be on that show or even talk about this? I said, because if I seen it, someone else seen it. But I'm going to tell you as we go along more in the story how this evolved and it, what piqued my curiosity. So what I did was I was on Facebook and I said, hey, I saw Bigfoot, you know, that type of deal. All my friends were kind of like laughing. Yeah, sure you did. Yeah, but, you know, were you drinking? What were you doing? Blah, 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 blah. I had someone contact me, um, one of the daughters of someone that I served with, um, down in Central America in seventh group, but one of his daughter, his daughter actually contacted me and she said, Hey, um, were you between Georgia and South Carolina? And I said, I said, yeah, that's exactly where I, where I seen it. You know, I, I, I saw it right there. And she said, Hey, I want to tell you something. I worked at this facility and she told me the facility. Can I say the name of the facility? Yeah, so yeah of course. Okay. She told me she worked at a facility called um, Alpha Genesis. Um, Alpha Genesis, I think that's the name. Um, and it's a company that does primates in South Carolina, like right in that vicinity. I saw it like right on like near Ridgeland, Switzerland, Ridgeland, right along 95 area going north. 
And I told her and I said, I said, you're kidding me. She said, no, she says, I worked at this primate research facility. Now, Wendy said to me, because she was the one that was in the car, she said, um, when she saw it, she said, oh, my God, that looks like a genetic experiment gone bad. Like, that's like, and what fascinated me was something like this moving that fast and doing something that I would, I would deem impossible, that no, quarter, no running back in the NFL could do what this thing did by stopping at that rate of speed, turn 90 degrees, run, then turn another 90 degrees and run, all while the car is traveling at 70 miles an hour. I would say that's impossible. And, and, and then when I, t- when I was talking to the person that contacted me, um, on private message me on Facebook. And then she explained, Hey, um, this is a primate research facility and they've had primates escape out of this location. So I was like, it fascinated me. I was like, you're kidding me. She said, no. And she goes, if you go online and you type in alpha Genesis and escape primates, you're going to come across that they've had like 19 or 20 or 30. They've had, and they say they've caught them and they put them back. And I said to her, I said, what I saw, was not a primate like what i saw wes was not a primate now listen you know uh, um i've been to the jungles of central america i have come across uh, i've been all over the world i've come across a lot of animals out in the wild i have never seen anything like this i have never seen anything that could move at this rate of speed if i had to pick up an m4 and engage some an animal like that moving at that rate of speed I couldn't acquire it as a target because it moved so fast that by the time I had my rifle up, it would be into another location. And then it was, it was already, it was like two steps ahead of me, but the, but when it stopped and it was running with the car with the headlight and it turned and it opened its mouth to brace for impact, I saw expression and I found that really fascinating. So we're, so um, it had the, the back legs of like a dog, but the front real powerful look like a, like a weightlifter, like an orangutan. But, but interesting enough, the face looked like it looked kind of human. It looked human. Like when I say kind, it had, you know, it had the, but it had kind of a, 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 a snout and it was longer than a, the mouth it was a lo- the, uh, the mandible, the maximal, it was longer than a human being. And it actually had facial expressions. Like it squinted when it was bracing for impact, like it knew it was going to hit, be hit by a vehicle. So it wasn't like it was just running and then just looked and then ran off. This thing kind of knew that it kind of screwed up, I think, that it was it cut in front of the vehicle for whatever reason, I don't know, and then ran with the vehicle and stepped to the side as we passed. You asked me the question when we were talking on the phone, like, hey, what did the ears look like? Well, the ears were, were downset. They weren't high in the head. They were kind of like a little bit they didn't rise higher than the head. They were kind of like and I describe it as Mr. Spark is, and um, the face was 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 kind of white. It didn't have any glowing eyes. The eyes looked like normal, like um, like like a like a person's eyes. Like, but I didn't see any like any any discoloration. It just looked like normal eyes, and it was it was literally and on the headlights of the the Chevy Tahoe. Uh, for at least five seconds before it stepped off after it made that, 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 that brace for impact and stepped off. And I kind of felt it, um, the weight of it as the car passed, it kind of brushed right along the car. And, and I was just in complete shock saying, what was that? So after, you know, doing a little bit of research and then finding this thing, alpha Genesis, I'm like, Oh, who are they? And then find out that, you know, they do genetic, genetic primate experiment. I don't know what they do. I mean, you can read it on the internet, but I don't want to, I don't want to be malicious to their company because I really don't know fully what they do, but I know that they do have primates that have escaped in that area. And it just blew my mind that this wasn't a primate. Like this was not something that you would look at and say, Oh, that's a, that's an orangutan. Oh, that's, that's this. So then when I'm doing my research and I'm saying, Hey, what kind of animal is that? Then I'm, I'm finding things like swamp ape and I'm saying, Hey, it kind of looked like that, except it had, it had dog type of legs. Then I come across dog man and I said, yeah, that, that looks like it, but it was on all fours and it was running and it was, and, and if you ask like the size, when it cut in front of the vehicle, I would say it's between six, seven, maybe at that, 
the length of the front of the vehicle and it, it was kind of extended but what fascinated me the most was that it could have kept continuing in front of us but it didn't it broke another 90 degrees and started running forward with the vehicle and then it was bracing for impact and i found that amazing that something could move at that speed Wes, we didn't stop and then start again we continued traveling and it, it went in a completely different direction at that rate of speed. And there's nothing in this world that can do that. And, and, you know, I'm not a conspiracist. I'm not one of these people. I have to see it to believe it. I'm not one of these people that, um, you know, go out there and say, Oh, I believe it. You know, I didn't see it, but I believe it. I'm the type that if I see something I, and I'll tell you, Hey, this is what I saw. If you choose to call me a liar, that's great. That's on you. But I'm telling you what I saw. You can um, you can think whatever you want. Uh, I'm not going to defend it because um, myself and her and Wendy both saw it. And she yeah. even said, "Now she's 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 from South Florida. She's been out in, out in the Everglades her entire life, and she's the type of person that she's a, very outdoorsy. And she, and ever since she saw what she saw, she said." If something like that's in the wild, I'm not ever going back out there again, because that something like that could sneak up on you and take you down at that speed. You wouldn't have you would have no idea um, how fast it was coming. I mean, it's it's faster than a puma. It's faster than a cougar. It's faster than a wolf. I mean, it was it's 70 miles an hour. If I wasn't in a car traveling at that speed late at night, I would say. I couldn't tell you how fast it was going, but it was clocking with the vehicle. Yeah, I think that's interesting. There's guys that I interviewed, gosh, a long time ago. I was telling you about it. Uh, they were part of the um, SWAT team coming back in West Texas, and they were driving their SUVs. And he said they were doing, you know, 70, 80 miles an hour out there. He said, it's just, oh, you basically drive straight. You know, you're in the middle of the desert. And he said the thing came out out of, out of nowhere and acted like it was going to charge the car, and then it turned sideways and ran with the car, and he couldn't believe that it could keep up with the car. Um, and it kind of sounds like, you know, you hear encounters like this where they're moving at these incredible speeds, and it's it's very odd, but, you know, very credible witnesses say that they're running at these speeds. Um, one question I wanted to ask you, the face didn't look human-like are you saying it it reminded you of human-like because of the expressions or did it no it, it i would say it was a cross between a human and a dog and that's probably it it had it didn't have hair on its face it had skin and but it had kind of like an outline like like a dog would like it would it had like on the forehead and where the ears were that was that was hair that was like this reddish brown hair like this tannish brown color but it it's it definitely had like skin on the face and it didn't look old it looked actually young it looked pretty vibrant it, i didn't see wrinkles it was very smooth it was it was um it was a, a it's very strange to say that it was a cross between something but that's the best way that i can describe it yeah, um, no, I it get... looked like a person that had um a snout it looked like a person who was was observant like it looked like it, it knew that it knew it knew because it made the facial expressions it knew that it was going to be hit it was kind of like in a self-preservation mode and then when it made the facial expressions it kind of like that kind of i i've never seen like um animals make that that look like I mean, I think we joked around about it before. Like when I was in Central America, I was in Panama and I was on a patrol. And I, the first time I ever came across a howler monkey, um, I was the number one guy. And, and, um, and I, I, I moved, I, I came through these wait a minute finds and, and all of a sudden the howler let it out. And he, it sounded like the earth just broke open. And it, it, it literally took me off to my, off my feet onto my knees. I just dropped to my knees immediately knowing like what the hell i didn't know what it was i mean everybody was laughing but i uh, i never i never heard something like that yeah they make horrendous noises okay, don't monkeys. they we used to have yeah we used to have that we used to have monkeys following us you know um throwing things at us that type of stuff and that was pretty common and you get used to it down there but um 
seeing something like this to know something like this is is real it's not like a fact a, a figment of my imagination listen and and, and i tell this to people like god's oh, bull you know bull crap or whatever and um and I have, a, I have a pretty crass mouth. I mean, I, uh, you know, I'm like, you know what? You can say what you think, but I'm telling you what I seen. And I didn't, ex- I didn't go looking for this. This is something that ran in front of a vehicle late at night. And did I ever think that something like that was out there? Hell no. I still love going camping. But if I think that I want to do the Appalachian Trail is like one of my, my big things. Hey, I want to I want to do the Appalachian Trail. I want to go in Georgia mountains and do all that. But thinking something like that is out in that area, there's no way. There's yeah. no way. There's no way that I would. I, w- I want to make that trek. Yeah, I don't blame you. I, w- I wanted to ask you: Did it ever go to two legs, or was it on four the whole time? Two the whole time. I mean, I'm sorry, four the whole time. It never went on to two. So it, when it came traveling south, it was it was like on a run on a gallop, and then I figured it ran past, but then. I figured it ran right past us. Like, you know, and then all of a sudden I saw it coming across the front of the car and I was like, Oh my God. And then I start running with the car. And that is what, that's why I was so in disbelief. Like I literally, as we went by it, I literally sat for a few seconds before I said anything. And I'm like, did you see that? And she's like, what was that? I said, tell me you saw everything I saw. She goes, it was in front of the headlights. How could I not see it? Yeah. So that's um that was like the most but the the thing about um when I started doing the research on the alpha genesis and what they do with primates um and you asked a, a question hey you know we've all seen the movie um planet of the apes and we've all seen that um the face kind of looked like that it company but more more like a dog snout more like the 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 mouth of a dog now, when but the face was was literally that smooth, kind of like a baboon. And, would you say it was kind of like? Yeah, a, yeah, exactly. It's what I thought it was a baboon. I would say yeah, but baboons got like kind of a droopy face. This was a tight face, but it, when it opened its mouth, and this is this is the unusual thing. What you know, what color the tongue was? It looked in the it it had to have been like a light, light, light pink, or I, I don't want to say almost white, but it was a very light, light, light color tongue. Because I was, as it was bracing for impact, it opened its mouth and it was like, you know that look when some, when you know you're going to hit something, you open your mouth and you go like like that, ah. Uh, yeah. That's the look that it gave. Like it knew it was getting hit by the car. And then it just stepped off to the side. But the back muscles, like on the shoulders, it was it was and the neck muscles, super, um, had long arms, super long, had hands, didn't have um, a hoof, had fingers. But the back part was – it had um, um, uh, like a, a short tail. Like no, I would say super short, not up and curly. I would say maybe six, seven, eight inches. But it was definitely sleek and very muscular. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. If it did, So you're saying it did have a tail then? Yeah, it's had a very – it appeared to be like a very, a very um, extension of the spine – because it was by that point it was running forward i was looking like over the back of it so it was running in front of my kind of like a not a big curly tail but just kind of like maybe six or eight inches yeah. um an extension but it was complete had no clothes on like it had nothing on it was um but the 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 waist was very very thin and the chest area was pretty big and the arms were definitely big like an orangutan but then that's that's kind of what I thought I saw, at, you know, when I'm I'm replaying it in my mind. I'm like, the closest thing I would tie that to would be an orangutan. But I'm like, what the frig is an orangutan doing in South Carolina? And I'm thinking maybe it got escaped, maybe this, maybe, you know, you're playing these scenarios. And I kept thinking, and I called my mother. I was like, Mom, I just saw something that was completely, you know, I, when the next morning, you know, when she woke up, I, I said, you know what? I, I think I saw like a Bigfoot. And she's like, what? And I said, yeah, I think I, but then I started going on and I started reading about, um, different things like dog men and other things that people have seen. And then I started saying, wow, it's, it's, it's pretty interesting. Um, but it's, it definitely had the back hinds of a dog and the front hinds of an, an ape or a, or a person. Yeah, it was, that's it was probably one of the most fascinating things I've ever seen. And, um, you know, would I like to see something like that again on the outside? If I wasn't inside the car, 
I, I, and listen, it doesn't, I'm, I'm not, I'm not some big hero. I'm not, I'm not like, Oh, Hey, I would have done this. That's, that's not the truth. If I would have been outside and, and I would have been hiking a trail and something like this would have came up on me, I would be a little concerned, especially if I didn't have a weapon on me, I'd be really concerned because the way this was moving and, and the, the way it could make a turn was just fascinating uh, uh, because I would say it's almost impossible. Would, would, I, would I ever think I'd be telling the story? No. Yeah, I hear you. Um, I hear you. Uh, it, yeah, it, no, it almost makes you feel like it's unnatural because when you see something like that, run like that, turn like that, cross in front of you guys, um, either it's a, you would think it would be kind of a dumb animal to do that, but the fact the way it moved almost seems kind of unnatural. I mean, looking at it, your description, it seems very unnatural, but just the speed. There's nothing else really that can move like that. That's that size, you know. Wes, I've seen, I've seen, like I've seen coyotes run. I've seen wolves run. I've seen pretty much everything run out because um, we've, you know, on a patrol or something, you'd come up on some animals, and whether it's birds, you always come up on something because you're out, you're out in their element. But I've never seen anything that could move at this speed and to stop on a dime and to turn direction. And then to not miss a beat, it was kind of like it was kind of surreal. And you know, we're having this 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 conversation. I never thought I would be having a conversation like this because it's not something that people talk about. But but and and the reason I am like I had a, friend, a buddy of mine call up today. So he's out on patrol right now. But he, he called up and he, my friend Kevin. He said he said like why would you go on and tell that story? He said you know. I said, you know why? Because if, if, if other people have seen it and they're not telling the story because they're afraid of being deemed a nut, then maybe there's a creature or an animal out there that we don't know exists. And maybe that it's out there. Maybe if more people came forward, we could find something like this. You know, I'm not saying that it's killing human beings. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying that that is definitely an apex predator. If, if I knew that if I saw, let's say I was in Florida, and I, uh, I, I, there was a Florida panther in the area. Well, I would report the Florida panther to the authorities because God knows what could happen, right? Um, whether it was, um, if it was, if it was in an urban environment. Let's say I saw a Florida panther in downtown Naples. Well, I would definitely get on the phone and call and say, "Hey, I just saw a Florida panther down, um, you know, Good Frank or whatever." And it would prefer, preferably to keep people safe. So. If something like this is out there, um, and I think more people could come forward and say, hey, I saw something that kind of baffled me, and I mean, let me tell you what it is, then it would then it would maybe have a database where people, like even this show, like I listen to this. I've never seen a Bigfoot. Like I've never have. Um, you know, I, I, I hear a lot of people saying that they have, and the stories pretty much are all the same. You know, they... They, it's a chance encounter or, or they're living in this place and they see something. But in this country, especially near the highway, that if something is on the highway like that and moving like that, because it's because, you OK, on a trail, a lot of like this, this animal trails, like when you're out in the woods, right, you're out in the jungles or something. There's cutter ants. They all travel a trail. They always they, they build their own trails. Well, animals will travel their own trail, right? Because they they can move at a faster rate of speed and they can get to a water source, right? right? So they, they all kind of use the same type of trail. But you know, seeing something like this moving down the highway at that rate of speed, it was like it was moving down a trail. So it's obviously been on that that area before because it was it could run. At, at a high rate of speed, not being impeded by anything. There were no trees. It was just an open run for that. And it could, it, and that's what it was, it seemed like it was doing. So has it been there before? Well, my answer is probably yes, because it's using that, the, the highway as a highway to move quicker. And at that time of night, there's not many people on the road. But we were on the road, you know, between three and four o'clock in the morning. You know, if you ever been out driving up in 95, you know, traveling north or traveling south, anything south of North Carolina, you, very few. You only see truckers and some a lot of the truckers take the other route up in the mountains. But um, you take you don't see that many people. And uh, people tend to move a little bit faster at nighttime because of um, 
there's no there's no yeah, there's nothing no impeding it or anything. Yeah, yeah, there's no traffic. But that's why I was really kind of fascinated that if it was moving down the highway, that that to me means that it's traveled that route before. It wasn't just like because it was moving quick. Yeah, it makes you wonder if it was like a game or something it was doing to see if it could catch a car or, um, you know, I'm just guessing because, you know, most wildlife, for the most part, they'll jump in front of your car, but it's usually dumb deer or most predators really don't jump in front of cars that, I, right. that, that I've that, seen. That's a, that's a good point because like deer in the headlights, like, you know, deers will freeze in the headlights. You know, they'll, come, they'll see a headlight, they'll, they'll jump across the road, they'll stop, a car will hit it, they'll ruin the car. Well, the same type of... If it was coming down the road, and I'm not speculating what it was doing because I, I don't know. I don't know what this was doing. But, you know, the lights were um, – we, we didn't even have – we didn't have the high beams on. We only had the low beams on. So it wasn't like it was – it was take the light was taking up the whole road, but it seemed like it was moving, and we were moving, and whether it became disorientated and then try to cut cut across – um, because it may have thought we were coming up and it's, so, you know, directly at it and it tried to go and then it, it stopped and went forward. I can't explain how something, anything could stop, turn 90 degrees and then keep moving. That that's impossible. Like to me, that's, yeah. that's something that you see in a movie that would be computer generated, but I saw it do it. I saw it move across the front of the vehicle and then, and then without missing a beat, it was now running with the vehicle. How and much, that's how much that's do you, what kind of um, how much do you think it weighed, Robert? Um, you know what? I don't know. I'm not a I'm not a big hunter, but I would say, like, if you look at a person, I would say, I don't know, between three to five hundred pounds. Like, with them, listen, muscle weighs more than fat. Everybody knows that. And this thing was really um, muscular, so it had a it, it was it was more top heavy and more bulk heavy in the front than it was in the back. Like it was pretty lean in the back and it was definitely, Wes, it was definitely uh, a dog from the waist down. It was definitely a dog from the waist down. And do I think that if this creature's out there, uh, you know, you know, Wendy brought up a really good point. She said, Hey, what if it was a genetic experiment? What if this company is doing something like that? They're doing, and it got, it got out because it said on the internet that 19 primates escaped and they said they got them back. But what if they didn't get them back? What if this is one of the 19? What if, you know, something uh, genetically is being altered? I don't know. I'm, I'm not a big conspiracist. I know the facts, you know? Yeah. Well, this thing seemed like, I mean, I know uh, Wendy's comment was it, it, seem like an experiment gone bad, you know, and that's the other question I was going to ask you and I already know the answer to it, but do you think, do you feel like it was natural? Well, that's a good question. Um, was it natural? Well, it didn't move natural, but it, it, but it, it looked like pieces of things I knew existed. Like genetically, it looked like the dog part, the, the back part of a leg. I mean, the, the, the back hinds of a, of a, of a, of a dog, the front uh, power looking of an orangutan or ape, and then the the head of uh, a dog um, with a with a not a long snout. It was probably medium, but it was definitely a snout. Um, could it be manufactured? Well, an artist an artist could make it, right? An artist could build something like this. But I don't know what people are doing genetically. I don't know if could it be um, born in nature. Well, I've seen some pretty crazy pictures of things that were uh, genetic mal malfunctions, you know, that, that were born like pigs have um, something that's genetically modified. And so I think that that could happen. I think they could. I mean, we're at this age in life where I think that they can build anything genetically GMO. They can, they can alter seeds. Why can't they alter the DNA or of an animal? I think they can do that. I mean, I'm not a scientist, but I'm sure there's a scientist listening out there right now saying, yep, we can do that. Or yep. Or no, we can't. My, my thing is that the truth, this is out there. This is not like, um, uh, like, a like, a like, I think I saw this. I'm telling you, this is, I saw this. And I would swear in a stack of Bibles, not because of, of credibility. Listen, 
I, my, every single day in my job, it's about credibility. I, I train police officers. I provide PSD to uh, very wealthy clients. I have to be very factual in what I see and what I say. When I say something, it has to be the truth. And everything that I do, this is what I saw. If I'm providing like like close protection for someone, if I think I see something, then I have to pay complete attention to that because that what I'm looking at could eventually become a threat to the person. Let's say I'm protecting as a security detail, right? So if I see someone making a move, I have to put eyes on that person and say, okay, that could be a potential threat. Well, I'm telling you what I saw in front of those headlights moving at that speed at a person that was outside of a vehicle would definitely be a threat. No, and I believe you. I, I it's uh, people see this kind of stuff a lot, you know, very odd stuff. Sometimes with the dog men, I get different reports of them. Sometimes they have tails, sometimes they don't. Um, some, there is a Sasquatch that I've talked to witnesses before and they say it has like a baboons type snout. They're generally a little bit smaller, but I have heard of people saying that, but your description, um, I've actually heard before and I don't know where really where to put it, whether you try and put it in the dog man box or the Sasquatch box. I don't know, but I have heard this description before from other witnesses that have seen something very similar, especially the Spock ears. That's a very fascinating uh, interesting point that you bring up because I've heard that before too as well. Not like a wolf, how their ears are on top of their head, more of on the right. side looking up, you know, kind of going up. Uh, but I had other witnesses say it, Spock ears too as well. And that's interesting that you, you mentioned that it makes you wonder what this thing is. Well, it, it's definitely, it, it, this is definitely a living, breathing thing. Um, it, it, it eats, it moves, it moves at nighttime. Um, whether it was hunting, whether it was, but it was moving from point A to point B. And we just kind of, we caught it on this narrow strip of road while it was moving down the road to try to get to where it was going. And then it just maybe became disorientated and cut in front of the, I had no idea why it ran in front of the car. It didn't make any sense. It was just, it could have continued along that strip, but it didn't. It, it definitely cut in front of the car and then it ran with the car and then it kind of had that, uh oh, look with his mouth open and then it kind of stepped off when i say stepped i mean all fours it kind of stepped off to the side and i felt the car brush along against it and and that was the most shocking thing like it's kind of like someone rubbing against the car like if you're sitting in a car and someone rubs against the car you can hear them go down the car yeah well that's exactly what I, we were within inches inches of running it over to be honest with you if we ran it over I don't think I would have gotten out of the car to look at it. I probably would have called the police. I would have sat there and I would have said, hey, we just ran over something. Um, and then, you know, call the authorities and say, hey, I don't know what it was, but it cut in front of us. Um, and if we were to hit it, I definitely wouldn't have gotten out of the car. Not, listen, I, I, had, I have a weapon on me when I travel. Um, you know, I, I pretty much know how to use it, but I'm not going to go out there, you know, shooting game or wildlife or anything else like that. But I wouldn't. I definitely wouldn't have gone out of the vehicle and on that that stretch of road. Um, and I spent a lot of time down the south. Like I was stationed at Fort Bragg. I was at Benning. I mean, I went to a lot of different places. And I've traveled up and down that highway numerous times throughout my life. And I've never seen anything like that. And then here I am, you know, traveling up um, up north and late at night, and to see something like that, it kind of changed my whole perspective of, hey, is there something else out there? Yeah. You know, there's something that maybe we don't know, or I said this to you on the air, I'm, I'm off the air when we're talking, I said, you know what, what fascinates me is that 10, 15 years ago, most people didn't have a camera on them at all times, right? No one did. But today, because of the iPhone and the other phones that you can, you, we have a video camera on us at all times. So I think that... I wish I – people said, hey, could you have taken a picture of it? I said, way too fast. I, I didn't even want to take my eyes off it. I wish I had my camera going. I wish I had, um, you know, um, a camera on the front of the car recording as we traveled, you know. Yeah, and I understand I you're I not, get, not getting a picture, though. I mean, in yeah, a moment it, 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 like yeah, that, that's probably the last thing on your mind, you know. Well, you know, no, normally, normally, like, normally, like, if I had a camera and I could get to it um, – I would get to it because it's kind of like, like a strategic reconnaissance, like strat recon. Like when you have, when you're doing, um, when you're going through taking pictures of something, 
you know, the, the objective is take the picture, right? That's, that's the mission objective. Hey, take the picture. But when you're sitting in a car traveling north and something moves at and comes at you out of the complete, you know, like, what was that? And you have no answers because normally I would say, oh, that was a deer. That was this. That was a moose. That was you could you could have. an. Uh, but when there's no answers and I'm trying to put things together and I'm like, I'm becoming more confused because I said, yeah. well, it looks like this, but it really wasn't that it could have been a baboon, but it had the back legs that look like a dog. And then it had the upper body that looked like a baboon or a person or a weightlifter or something, but it was covered in hair. But the hair wasn't long. The hair was probably like maybe two inches. It wasn't like like a lot of hair, but it was definitely like hair. Would I call it fur? No, I think I would call it hair. You know, it wasn't like it was dirty or matted or um, like a, the hair of a Welch corgi. It was more like... Um, like like hair, like like you would think of hair, like like I don't want to say human hair, but it would definitely yeah, no, be that it. that look. It wasn't fur, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, and the traps, traps were the the muscles on the back they were just they were they were just they're pretty pretty massive. Like so, I didn't see the chest too much because it looked like when it was moving down the highway, like when it was coming down the left side of the highway, it kind of was like, I don't want to say a blur, but, but picture a bowling ball being rolled at you and you running at it at the same time. And then you saying, Hey, what's that? And you look, and then it, all of a sudden it's moving in another direction. And that's exactly what it did. But it, its chest was big, but I didn't get it. Like a, I, I couldn't tell if it was male or female. Um, it was, it, its face wasn't wrinkled. Um, didn't ha- it didn't appear to have whiskers. I really couldn't even see the teeth when the mouth was open because it, the tongue fascinated me because it was long. It wasn't like a short tongue. It was a long tongue, and it was a light color tongue. Yeah, you mentioned kind of that pinkish. That's an artist. Yeah, it was. You know, and it almost looked white, which was like like so light pink, almost white, because the headlights were right, like were literally in its face, like literally. It, it, if it would have ran up 10 feet, I, I probably wouldn't have had as much, but it, it looked like it was, it was, it looked like a post, like something like a flash card. Bang. There it is right in front of you. And you try to take it all in and within a couple of seconds, then it's gone. And that's exactly what it did. You know, so I have these, you know, I, I tell people this story and I say, hey, listen, this is going to sound crazy, but have you ever seen anything? Like I talk to a lot of police officers because I that's what I you know I, I what I train and move around. And I ask them, I say, hey, have you ever seen anything? I mean, I've gotten some interesting stories. I mean, they can tell the stories, but I've gotten some interesting stories about you know um, seeing what they thought was a ghost or an apparition or something like that. And they okay. said it's really strange. I don't know what it was, but I saw something that looked like this, and I was like, holy smoke! Like that's pretty interesting. Yeah, it is. You know, so a I lot tell of that story. And some people like will laugh. I'll say, "Well, if you want to know the story, I'll tell you." But I'm, 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 I'm telling you on factual point. I'm not telling you because I want to. I want to write a book on this, or I want to. I'm telling you because this is what I saw. And if there's things like this out there, then and and someone else sees it, they should call in and say, "Hey, I saw it. Something like this at this location." Yeah, because I- seeing, yeah, seeing, well, seeing that in in Georgia completely ruined my Appalachian Trail. Um, I, I wanted to be on the Appalachian Trail hiking it this summer, and I and I'm and I'm like, there's no way, there's no way I would go up there unless I was holding an M4 or an AK um, at Port Arms, and I was walking with it all the time because this is if something like that's out there and it can move at that speed, you are you are not going to stop it. You would just and if it's a, if it's a hunter and it's going to hunt someone or take something, you are not going to stop this. I don't care how big and bad you think you are or how or what you have as a weapon, um, because I, I honestly don't think I could have got a sight on it, that it, it was it was fast. But the only time it stopped moving, that, that speed is when it was running with the car, and it was moving at the same the same trajectory we were moving, that's when I got a look at it. Everything else was like quick, quick, quick. Yeah. Like, whoo, whoo. Well, I believe you, and I, and I really do appreciate you sharing it because there's other people have seen this thing. I've heard a lot of it off the air of seeing 
very something very strange like this to where really what where do you put it? But I guess at the end of the day, where do you put a dog man or where do you even put a Sasquatch? Really, um, there's not really a box they can fit in nice and neatly for anyone. And something like this, like I said, I've, I've heard it before, and I really appreciate the fact that you come forward and and share it. No, thank you. It's I think that I've actually learned a lot. Um, you know, two things. You know, you know what? I, I, as I was, lo- you know, interviewing and looking at this, and what I found fascinating was the, the the panda bear. Right? There were there were people said the panda existed, and people said no, it, it didn't. It didn't. And um, then they, you know, took a, like maybe a hundred years, and they actually found one. And my point is that if more people come forward, you know, and they're worried about their job, most of the guys in the police department, I mean, they don't need to get a, a psyche valve saying that, hey, I, I think I saw a monster. Like, you know, that, that you would be, you would definitely, you, especially if you'd, you'd be up for a psyche evaluation. Yeah. Or, or a lot of the guys on, in, um, let's say, in special operations or something like this, they're not going to come forward because then people will be looking at you sideways saying, you saw what? And, and, that would be that's so it's better sometimes to say nothing but i think if someday something like this is found because i'm sure it will be and i'm sure that someone will catch it on camera someday it will be it will be seen and then the proof will come out and they'll say that you know these animals or whatever this was you know have been living here for this long and do you you know do you know i think i was telling you this earlier I hear I watch these TV shows ever since I I saw this I was watching these TV shows about these people out there looking for for um you know an animal in the woods. I mean most of the people listen. You know I have been out all throughout North, North Carolina especially. I've been you know we've been to Uwari. I've been to a whole bunch of different places. You know I've never come across a bear in the woods. What do you think about that? I've never come across, and I've been in the woods for years and years and years and years. And uh, the only time, that, because you know, they could, can they smell us? Can they have good camouflage? Are they indigenous to the area? There's certain things that I have, like I have never seen a bear out in the wild. And people like uh, I've seen. Now I've talked to Alaskan state troopers, and they see them all the time. But I've seen just about everything else outside of the United States. But when I come in here, and I saw a moose once up in um, up in Maine, you know, and I've, I come across coyotes and right. um, you know deer and all, all the most of that stuff. Uh, but there's certain things that that if they don't want to be seen, they will not be seen. That's my point. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. And I think with these things, like I said, most of them are chance encounters. Some of them are not so chance encounters where they're being hunted or something like that. But I think most encounters really are chance encounters and who knows what this thing was, you know, if it was some science experiment gone bad or if it was the strange thing is I've heard the same description uh, on the West coast. And so I don't really know what to make of it or what this thing is, Uh, but I hope more people come forward and, and share it. And hopefully we can, like I always say, I know it's kind of a dumb statement, but kind of put pieces of the puzzle together and, What is it that people are running into? And it starts by sharing the encounter. So um, I really appreciate you coming on, Robert. Thank you again. Thank you. Listen, and stay in touch. If you need anything, just call. And, um, you know, I'm listening. I listen to the show. And, again, I'm trying to make – I'm trying to put the pieces of my puzzle together and to say, hey, what was that? And you've got a great show. Um, I'll listen – you know, when I came across it – and then I started listening more and more about people who came, had this chance encounters and it fascinated me and not because like, I, I want people to know who I am or, or, Hey, I want to write a book on this. That's, that's not my objective. My thing is that, listen, you know, I was in the military, you know, I was in special forces. If there's something dangerous that's out there and, and people are just ignoring it or they're not, telling other people they've seen something, then it would create more of a danger for the civilians that just kind of chance encounter something like this outside of a vehicle. So th- that's why I came forward and to talk and tell you about this, you know, um, but it's fascinating. And um, it's, I hope it, I hope it maybe illuminates someone who's listening to, to maybe send you an email and say, Hey, I saw something like that at this location. And, this is what I thought it was, and but I, I, I highly recommend people to call in and to and to tell 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 what they saw. And yeah, I couldn't agree more. 
Thank you. Thank you, Wes. No, thank you, Robert. Uh, All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks again, Robert. And that's it for tonight, everyone. Remember, if you've had an encounter, shoot me an email. My email address is wes at sasquatchchronicles.com. If you get a chance, please check out the website, sasquatchchronicles.com. Get additional shows. Check out the daily blog. And I'm not on YouTube. So there you go. (laughs) Until next time, everyone.